Well, good morning, everyone. It's December 3rd. It's a Tuesday. And folks, I know, I know you're thinking, Roger, you were right. We should have listened to you. I told you so. Look at it right here. Tra trade tension flared after China retaliated for U.S. support of protesters in Hong Kong, putting investors in a selling mood. Asian regional markets are generally hurt by declines in trade and the slowdown in the Chinese economy that might cause. And again, this happens. And did you hear anything positive about resolution of trade war? Not a thing. This is the first big, big volatile day we've had in almost, let me show you this, since middle of October. Usually when volatility is low or consistent like it is right here, markets tend to trend. But when volatility increases, that usually signals the end of a move. Now, I'm expecting the SPY to move down to the 300 level to hit the 50-day moving average. I'm actually expecting it to move a little lower, maybe like, uh, oh, right around the 293, 294 area, possibly. It's going to happen, folks. I know, you, I know you want the stock market to continue going higher, but it needs to cool off. It's been moving too fast, and it's been moving fast higher on low volume, which means institutions have not been buying this. This has been mostly caused by retail traders, and usually about 85% of moves caused by retail traders will become undone by institutional traders because the markets are controlled by institutions, about 75 to 80% of all activities institutions, which is why you're seeing such a low level of incline here or volatility and a very steady, almost lack of any up or down volatility, just a very, very steady range. So again, we're seeing downside. I'm pretty sure we're going to hit the 50-day line. That means bonds, the long bond, as you could see here, is expected to rally. I'm looking for the long bond to hit the 50-day moving average and trade higher. And remember what I told you folks about two weeks ago? VIX is at a two-year low. And VIX, which, which is the volatility of the S&P 500, this is the add the money implied volatility, which tells you what the S&P traders think the S&P is going to do in the future. This anticipates it. So more fear comes into the market. This rises, less fear, this declines. I'm expecting, it was a 12. It was right around, around 11.83. The two-year low has been right around 12. And I told you guys, I told anyone who would listen to me, literally, please, please, please keep in mind, VIX is going to hit 20 before the end of the year. It's heading in that direction. Now, there's, there's, there's something you can do about all of this. There's a segment of the market that's not correlated to the S&P 500. It's not. Let me show you. Check this stock out, all right? This is CAAS, China Automotives. Yes, I know it's called China, but again, this stock has zero correlation with the overall market. It's a, look, look at the volume here, 61,000, 130,000. It's, it's got plenty of liquidity if you're buying shares, but it's not made for institutions. It's not on institutional radar, which means it's not correlated with the market. When something it doesn't have institutional attention, the reason it's not correlated with the market is because institutions tend to arbitrage positions against the broad market, which is why you see such strong correlation between Microsoft and S&P, Google and S&P, Apple and S&P. If you don't believe me, just pull up a chart. You'll see for yourself, especially intraday. Pull up a five-minute chart of a large S&P 500 stock and look at it intraday with the S&P 500. You will see the trading action is almost identical. I'm not kidding you. Um, the opens could be different, but after the open, if you look at S&P 500 and if you look at Apple, you will see that they're literally moving neck to neck. That's because large cap stocks are arbitraged against the S&P 500. You don't have that with small caps. It doesn't exist. They're not on the radar of funds yet. So this stock went literally um, from November 18th, right around here, here, November 18th, right here. Look at this, right there, right there. Sorry, I'm looking at the dates to, to match up the date. This stock was at 290-ish. Two, it went to 385, all right? From November, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 trading sessions less than 10 trading sessions. These smaller companies, they don't really have a lot of correlation with the, with the S&P 500. And 
Folks, every week I have a system that uncovers four new stocks like this. Four, four, not one, not two, not three, four. Every week. It's called the Cyborg. And I just released the latest batch of stocks. These stocks have the potential to really, really scream higher. If you want me to email you the list of stocks, click the button below and let me know. All right? And I'll take care of it for you. Click the button below this video. Check out Cyborg. It is amazing, especially for a system that doesn't have correlation with the stock market. Folks, if you like this channel, subscribe. Give me some feedback. Send me feedback at supportedmarketgeeks.com. And we post these videos on Facebook Wealth Press channel. So go to Facebook and look up Wealth Press or just go to Facebook Wealth Press. I usually post them there before the market opens. Take care. Check out the Cyborg. If you want gains like this from 271, to, we're talking like what? Like uh, we're talking more than 50% on a stock, not option, in, in 10 trading sessions. I mean, you're not gonna get that with, a, with, with Apple or Microsoft. Even if you're buying an option, you may, only if you get really, really lucky. But these suckers, oh my, they're just, these, these things are a beast. Check out Cyborg, click the link below this, vi this video, excuse me, non-correlated to the S&P 500. So when the S&P 500 goes to the 50-day line, you still have stocks like this making all-time highs and just breaking out hard. I'll talk to you guys later. Check out Cyborg. Talk soon.